Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, I worked on this project for about a year, uh, which I'm going to present right now. Uh, the concept is uh, very simple. Um, to figure out the mathematical equations of pasta and use the results to create the ultimate uh, sort of guide and culinary research on the subject. So this book magnifies a single stage of the pasta making process, the uh, forming, which consists in extruding a mix of water and uh, durum wheat through a bronze dye to produce a by now familiar shape. There are in fact a number of other stages to this particular uh, process from netting, watering, drying, uh, packing, each of which has its own physics and mathematics and about which I know virtually nothing. You see, I am an architect. In other words, I use mathematics to create, to actually model building structures, envelopes, and behaviors. And I had a free time on my hands, a little bit of free time, so I decided to apply similarly the same methods uh, to the study of pasta. Now, the question is, you know, why would you want to be doing that anyway? Well, first of all, it's a challenge. I mean, it's there to be taken. And second, most importantly, designers and architects, let's say classifying styles and objects is, is also what architects and designers have to do. Um, admittedly, pasta isn't exactly uh, big data, but hey, to the average person, it's big enough. In other words, no one knows how many shapes there are out there or what they might be called. Um, in Italy, every region creates uh, little known shapes or spawns minor variations of existing types and gives them local names. So sorting through this particular set requires a close knowledge that only, say, uh, ethnographers uh, possess. So this book um, took on the challenge um, and decided to do it on its own terms. So loosely based on the concept of phylogeny, you know, the study of relatedness amongst natural forms, um, I reduced this apparent complexity or diversity into uh, 92 fixed but repeatable types, um, which, based on shared morphological features, which I mapped on this pasta family tree. So on this tree, uh, to which I will return in a second, each end leaf looks like this. There is a, a short blurb, a surface plot, um, three parametric equations, and two graphs. This, by the way, is pasta graminea. It's a specialty of the northern Italian region of Emilia-Romagna. Um, normally, you prepare it with you know, a chunky sausage sauce or you know, with our all-famous uh, ragula bolognese. Or, uh, barring that, you could also do it with a light tomato sauce if you care about that sort of thing. But on the surface plot, you'll see that each dot corresponds to the solution of the three parametric equations for a given value of the ranges above, while graphing each equation against the other two will give us the transversal and longitudinal profile of pasta graminea. So we use these and other similar results to position graminea on the pasta family tree. You can see it, it's right here. It's got a bent longitudinal profile, a hollow cross section, a smooth surface and smooth edges. So let me run you through a few examples. Let's start with simplicity. This is Acini di Pepe. Uh, it's the smallest of the Pastune Minute. Uh, it's basically a tube. You can probably tell the parametric equations of the circle compounded by those of the line. Um, same for Bucatini. It's actually just a tube of different proportions. And then things get a bit more complicated. This is Creste di Galli. It's the shape with a mohawk. It's actually produced by Mamarella, which is the Napa Valley estate of Francis Ford Coppola. Another member of the uh, uh, Pasta Ripiena, which is Fagottini, a little bit like Raviolo. Now, you may notice on this slide that um, the amount of writing needed uh, to model that seems to be more or less commensurate to the apparent complexity of the form. That is broadly true. To describe specifically this geometric form, the three parametric polynomials fill out about six lines. But in general, the relationship between form and formulation, as it were, is not always that straightforward. For instance, to make this one, this subtly tapered shape, we barely need a couple of lines. This, by the way, is Fusilli Alferetto. Um, it's generally best dished up with you know, a lamb ragu. But more often than not, art imitates life. Uh, what I mean is that to make pappardelle, we just cut and braid strips of dough. To write pappardelle, we just duplicate self-similar sets of polynomials. So I often get asked the question, what uh, is your favorite shape? And I think answering that question leads me quickly towards the first conclusion of this talk. Well, just look around you. Um, chairs, tables, floors, ceilings, walls, everything is flat, boxy, and rectilinear. In the world of pasta, on the other hand, it's exactly uh, the other way around. In other words, everything is blobby, curvaceous, 
shapely or C2 continuous in technical speak. This is simply because it's almost impossible to produce an angular form by blowing a, mixus, uh, a viscous mixture through a narrow slit. Hence, uh, it's, a mirror noodle, uh, it's a mirror universe where everything is pliant and, and, and sort of curvaceous. And in the mirror noodle universe, there is only one individual, one shape that you can tell apart from all the others, and it's this one, the boring-looking trene with its angular cross-section and rectilinear profile. For that reason alone, it really is my favorite. So the book concludes with uh, this network graph in which I reshuffled uh, the pasta family tree into a richer information map. Think of it as uh, the sitting plan of the pasta family reunion or a big Italian wedding. Uh, the idea is to connect now uh, shapes across types to reveal unforeseen sort of formal affinities. We even made a physical um, version uh, of this diagram in which those newly uncovered relationships were laser engraved on sheets of acrylic. So because it deals with food, uh, this modest one-year project got an insane amount of attention. I mean, it was profiled in uh, National Public Radio, CBS on Sunday, the New York Times, uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, the Financial Times, GQ Russia, um, Oprah.com. I'm just saying this because the, the story behind science, I believe, is a key uh, part of any scientific endeavor. But what I found out doing this is that if you're really, truly interested in mainstream coverage, then, well, you're better off dealing with noodles than, in my case anyway, hospitals or schools. Or could it be maybe uh, servers and big data? Thank you very much.